During the 1950s, conflict between the United States and the Soviet Union was making national headlines. Domestically, the FBI was investigating citizens suspected of being communist sympathizers. At Black Mountain College, the wave of World War II veterans enrolling under the GI Bill receded, and the college suffered declining enrollment. Beyond the campus, Western North Carolina was changing too. Tourism was assuming a greater role in the regional economy and desegregation of public schools set the nation on a new path toward equality. Charles Olson was the final rector of Black Mountain College during these transformational times. Olson was brought in to save a struggling institution. Although he was only able to keep the school open a few years, he made important contributions to its legacy. Olson visited Black Mountain College in the 40s, left, returned, and was there in residence from 1951 to 1957. He was rector from 53 to 56, and he stayed on at the college essentially to, to liquidate its assets. And while he was there, um, certainly the arts flourished, but the literary arts took center stage, and it is during Olson's time that the School of Black Mountain Poetry um, it's not coined yet, but it begins. And one of the myths about Black Mountain College is that it was completely apart from the community and did not mix and mingle with either the town of Black Mountain or Asheville or the surrounding areas. And the more we look at that question or that myth, we realize it's, it's really not true. In the evening time or late afternoon, often students would go to one of two bars on the outskirts of Black Mountain. The first one was called Roy's and the other one was called Ma Peaks. They would listen to jukebox records, They'd probably do some dancing, um, drink beer, of course, which was the primary goal. But um, there were some social interactions between students and the community. I've never heard about any confrontations between local residents and Black Mountain College students. There were differences in outlook, but I don't think there was animosity. The Red Scare of the 1950s brought Black Mountain College under increased scrutiny from law enforcement intent on ridding America of socialist influences. John Corcoran is the son of Black Mountain College faculty member David Corcoran. I would come home and I'd see that black Ford out there and I knew that my father was being interviewed by the FBI and talked to about some student. So I think there, there was a sense that um, there was maybe a little anti-American undercurrent at Black Mountain College. And, and I think as the students moved out into public life, whatever files had been kept on Black Mountain College, when somebody said, well, I attended Black Mountain College, that's what triggered these investigations. It's also while, during Olson's tenure, that uh, Black Mountain Review, one of the you know most experimental, cutting-edge, magnificent, amazing magazines of its time, was founded and published. There were only seven issues, and the Appalachian Collection has seven pristine copies. The last of which, the famous Beat issue, that has. Kerouac, Ginsburg, etc., is actually signed by Robert Creeley. Black Mountain College always operated on the margins. The institution had no endowment and was unable to recruit enough students to remain viable. Intense anti communist sentiments during the 1950s also hurt the school. Although the college closed in 1957 due to lack of finances, in 1960, the publication of New American Poetry formally recognized the Black Mountain School of Poets. With this recognition, Charles Olson successfully secured the legacy of Black Mountain College in the literary world. <laughs> <laughs>